Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today I'm going to broach a subject which is perhaps a little unpalatable for many people. You might have guessed I'm dressed in an appropriate fashion. And it stems from a question I've received from a gentleman called Steve. Now Steve says, a subject that's been preoccupying me recently as I have been the executor of a will is what happens when we are chaps no more. It's not an easy subject, but a gentleman should plan for his heirs and consider the world of the chap without him. Well, Steve, you make a very valid point because let's be honest, it's not often in the rich tapestry of our lives that we actually spend some time thinking about our mortality and actually when it will come to end. In fact, lots of people feel deeply uncomfortable discussing what happens when life comes to its conclusion. Uh, however, it's going to happen. I can tell you now, I served for nearly a quarter of a century in the British law enforcement world and as a consequence of that job I encountered many people whose lives came to a sudden unexpected and abrupt ending and if they hadn't left preparation it was particularly more difficult for the people who came after them and I think it's fair to say that a true gentleman likes to alleviate the burden of stress on his loved ones and those who will be left behind by making preparations for his demise. So today I am going to offer you five suggestions that I think you, as a meaningful chap, need to put in place to make sure that when the end comes, it's going to be under your terms. Now my first tip for you is very predictable. It is make sure you've left a will because the will or last will and testament, whatever you want to call it, is actually the cornerstone of your end of life preparations. And in simple terms, it lay lays down your instructions on how you want your assets to be distributed and to whom those assets go. But you'll be surprised how few people have actually taken steps to just get this simple task done. Um, I know through looking at statistics that six out of 10 adults in the UK have actually not made a will. And even when you get to the age of 55 and over, three out of 10 people just haven't made the effort to make their last will and testament so that it reduces all of that burden and stress on the people who are left behind. Now, this is your opportunity to let your instructions be known. And you need to do that on certain things which will have meaningful thought for you. So things like your pets, where you want your pets to go, if you have any, when you reach the end of your life. And any sentimental or special mementos that you wish distributed to people that you've encountered through life, for whom you know it's something which will bring them perhaps some blessed relief when they realize that you're no longer with us. So little things like that. The other thing you want to do with your will is yes, you know, make sure you do one, but then make sure you keep it updated because life changes. I mean, I made my first will probably when I was in my twenties. Now I'm in my fifties. It's been changed several times because circumstances change. And one of the things which springs to mind actually makes me make sure I stay on top of my will. I'm gonna go back to my service as a, as a police officer. I remember once going to a cemetery in my local town where I was working at the time because a soldier, British soldier, had been killed while on active duty and he was being buried in our local uh, cemetery. And there was a big military funeral for him. That's why I was there as a police officer to make sure everything was safe and secure. However, what played out in front of me was probably the greatest lesson in making sure you keep your will up to date. Now this young lad who tragically had died very early in life, he, when he joined the army, he'd signed up for all of the death benefits and all that. And he had to nominate the person who would be the beneficiary of his death benefits should he die in service. And of course, being a probably a 17 year old lad at the time, he signed up his girlfriend at the time as the beneficiary of his, of any benefits. 
However, five or six years later, he was now married. He had a family. And at the point of his death, his remaining loved ones might have realistically expected that they would have been the beneficiary of any um, benefits which were forthcoming. However, because the young fellow had not kept up with his affairs, he hadn't changed the beneficiary. So his uh, girlfriend from you know, six, seven years ago, who now played no part in his life at all, was the recipient of a six-figure sum when he lost his life. And let, believe you me, it was a very uncomfortable situation at the graveside when his wife and family were present and his girlfriend, the newly rich <laughs> former girlfriend, uh, was also at the graveside. And it reminds me, keep on top of the will, keep it updated. You don't want a situation like that to occur. Now my next tip for you relates to end of life directives because a true gentleman doesn't just make consideration for his financial matters, he also makes plans for his future end of life medical care because if it comes along suddenly there's nothing you can do about it. But at this point you can begin to plan. You can take into account the thoughts that you have about how you wish to meet your end and you can do that by putting in place things like a living will or a um, enduring power of attorney if you live in the UK where you can empower your friends, your loved ones, whoever you choose to make decisions about your end of life care if you're unable to do so. So making these plans at a stage where you're you know, you're able to think about the dignity and the way you would like to reach the end of your life, now is the time to do it. And the important thing to do is ensure you communicate these instructions to those who you can envisage being around and making sure these things take place. Your family, your loved ones, close friends, people that you trust, your medical carers if you're in a situation where they need to know. Because by telling them, you will end up having the dignified exit from this world that you, as a gentleman, should deserve. Now my next tip for you relates to a legacy portfolio. You think, what on earth is that? Well, a true gentleman doesn't just think about the legalities of life so that they're all sorted out for the next generation. You should consider thinking about a legacy portfolio. This is a way of capturing the aspects of your, li your life which you would like to go forward into future generations. This used to be quite common in previous generations where people would leave what they'd call papers for others to read, the letters, the things like that, which encompass their life journey. But you can do the same because all of these things would otherwise be lost on your passing. So many people will sort of create uh, a portfolio of memories and things which they would like to go forward. It can be a collection of photographs. It can be letters, which are somewhat less common these days, but people still do so. It can be even a memoir or recorded messages particularly a memoir, you know, if you're somebody who's led an interesting, full and active life and you can envisage at some point in the future a grandchild or a great grandchild asking the question, you know, what has our family done in the past? You can leave a sort of tomb, a volume of your life story. Call it a memoir so that it can be read by future generations and they can learn from your life experiences and revel in the achievements that you made in your lifetime. Now for myself, um, I've been keeping a journal for many, many years. It serves as a sort of daily diary and a goal setting target that I achieve every day or month or week or year even when I do my life audits. But if you were to look at my life journals from sort of 10 years back, you find a picture of my life unfolding and how I got through life. So for me, that kind of serves as my, uh, my life portfolio for people to read in the future. And of course, there's something like 600 videos now in the ether of me giving lifestyle advice and sartorial tips to people. So my, um, my legacy portfolio is kind of sealed here forever now. 
Now, my fourth tip for you is kind of straightforward, but it's it's organize your financial affairs. Get them ready. And, you know, so that it, the people coming after you, you've lessened the burden on them. We're gone at this phase. Nothing's going to trouble us anymore. But the people who are left behind, they've got to pick up the mess. They've got to continue living. And we can make that a lot easier for them by getting all of our financial affairs in one consolidated place so that when they need to pay for our funeral, do whatever they need to do, they can go and access the information that they need to let their lives go forward in a happy, stable way. Now, this can be as simple as just leaving instructions, but also in this modern era, you might want to leave passwords. You might want to leave uh, instructions on where your funding, your money is all hidden away. And of course, let's be honest, gentlemen, if you've been maintaining a sl secret slush fund, which you've been using to take the odd conference trip to Las Vegas, or it's been funding your trips to the horse racing, perhaps you want to declare that in your, <laughs> in your uh, financial consolidation report for those who are coming after you so that that money can be used to a positive effect after we're off at the racetrack in the sky. Now, my last tip for you is fairly straightforward, really, because we have perhaps foreseen the future. We know our demise is inevitable, so we can plan our farewell. And this is a wonderful way of saying goodbye to the people that have loved us and have played a part in our life. We can plan for it. We can make provision, maybe for our funeral, our memorial service. We can make our views and thoughts known if we talk about it and perhaps we leave a written record of what we'd like. So we can decide, you know, do we wish to be buried or cremated? Um, do we, what sort of memorial service we want? We can choose the music, the readings. If you're a secular person, a bit like myself, you know, the thought of a religious service would be anathema to the way I've lived my life. So you leave instructions to ensure that, you know, you want a humanist exit from this world or none at all. It's entirely down to you if you make plans and you prepare for that final exit. Now, we can also help by leaving our loved ones with a nice sense of closure after we've, you know, the curtain has come down on our life by maybe even planning our memorial service. We can leave a sum of money in our will, what we talked about earlier, so that that can be spent on a big party where we can all come together and think about our lately lost friend, us, uh, and have joyous times. And, you know, we can just make provision so that everybody says goodbye to us with a smile. And I've been to some end of life situations like that, funerals that have been joyous in their outlook rather than dour and sad because the person who has left us has left instructions. That's how they wanted it to be. You can even leave instructions that your funeral, everybody wears white, everybody wears color. You can do whatever you want. It's your funeral. You can plan it. You can do anything you like. You can even choose, if you think in advance, your gravestone. If you have a gravestone in your plans, if you choose your own gravestone and make provision for it, you can then choose your own epitaph. So you get what you want written on the stone rather than what somebody else thinks you might like at some point in the future. So, in conclusion, I think if we are able to confront the inevitability of our mortality, we can be graceful in the way that we make plans for the future, we lessen the burden on others, and people remember us in the best positive way. It's going to happen, just as well be ready for it when it does. So, I know it's been something of a dark topic today, but our demise is something which faces us all Let's, fee let's meet it on our terms, and perhaps it won't be such a big, dark, scary place then. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more like this, click subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can leave me a comment, you can drop me an email, you can buy me a coffee, one-off thing, or you can even become a patron. And if you do that, you get the additional video content, which I create each and every week for the folks who support me in that way. And you will find the links to all of that in the show notes below. So until the next time, take care, and I will see you again very soon.